So we're going to make an artificial star. One of the issues that I've got at the moment is that uh, my guide scope has uh, a very weird pattern in it. Um, it's not enough to cause huge problems, but um, from a guiding perspective, but it, it is just definitely not connected correctly. So what I got is I found this uh, little torch. Just I found it in some junk drawer somewhere. So what we're going to do is make this something I can mount down um, the corridor and then we can use it indoors as a artificial star for testing of the optics. So what we've got here is just a small piece of aluminium foil, just straight kitchen stuff, a uh, little pin. Ideally you want this pin to be as small as possible on as fine as possible i didn't have anything else so i'm just going to give this a go um and the idea is just literally punch a little hole in it as small as you can that's still a hole um and hopefully you can see that that is just a small hole i'm going to actually try and create an even smaller one next to it. See if that works. Yeah, so the smaller the better, ideally. So what we're going to do is mount that in here, in inside this uh, um, torch. So this is just what I managed to find, sort of just in the junk. But you can get these down at like the reject shop or just about anywhere for a couple of bucks. Um, you want ideally one here that has got some kind of um, removable front rather than all the integrated stuff or sealed. Um, and this one luckily has a nice little removable. Um, lens here so I'm just going to use that to make a template okay so that is our artificial star I managed to <laughs> make a bit of a mess at the other end here on the corner but um, that should be something I can now set up uh, down as far away as I can down a corridor so I can do some collimation of the scope Alright, so we've seen the pattern that we're getting, this sort of teardrop sort of shape um, from the scope. So we, what we're going to try and do here is work out why it's doing that. So what I've un undone the three screws that keep the front lens on the tube. Um, and I can feel it, I can hear it moving around in there, and it really, I wouldn't have thought should be moving at all, so, um, so you can get that out of the way there. So I think what I'm going to do here is just screw off this and 
before I do anything else, I think I'm just going to go and grab some gloves. Okay, so gloved up. I'll try and remember which way I've got all this. Okay, so there are some small spaces there. And let's keep those. It seems quite flush. Question is, is there anything in there that's stopping it from moving around? It's causing that. There's no adjustment in it, so there's no um, set screws or anything where I can adjust the collimation. So, don't know what I'm going to do with that, to be honest. I think I'll just put it back together and Maybe change the orientation a little. Let's see if it helps. I can still hear it moving around in there though. They're not flopping around. So it seems to me that it needs to have some kind of shimming done. in order to have it not move around in there um, but moving around isn't the issue it's the fact that we've got that pattern, that shape and just don't think that can be from the two different elements moving around because I, I suspect they move around together um, but that's really going to be difficult to characterize I may go around the outside edge in fact let's see if it moves forwards or backwards it really isn't moving forwards and backwards however it is definitely you can hear it moving laterally so I pull this apart and Let's see, potentially I think maybe putting a small strip of aluminium foil might be thin enough to stop it moving around. Just going to have a quick look here, you can see that you can just see there's a tiny bit of an edge on there. And when I turn the whole thing around, there's not an edge on this side, in fact it goes the other way. So. There is a bit of a movement around, so you can see there's a, there's a fairly significant gap just there, so it's like they aren't centered on each other perfectly, and I guess that's the thing is if I keep moving them around, I can get a bit of consistency on there, but I still think that it that's still going to move around so the thing is I think the it may just simply be too tight in there to put um, some foil um, but we'll give it a go just even if it's just put it on a tiny bit on the edge um, 
see if I can get that to work. I'm going to try something different first. Maybe this will be a little easier. I think if I put this tape all the way around, we're going to end up with it being too thick to fit back in the um, Gonna go part way around. And hope that that actually might keep them more aligned to each other. I should be able to get this in and it should sit flush um, well hopefully well, we don't it's not wobbling around in there anymore And now it's worth noting that this is uh, this is quite flat. I've checked as best I could to see that this is not uh, offset at any, any angle. Um, and as it stands, the, when I put this on, it does sort of outside of you know having to line it up to screw things in. It is flush and doesn't have any wobble to it. Okay, we are going to go and try and see if we can get another star image and see if it's improved at all. Alright, so it seems to have improved slightly, uh, at least it's more circular. It's not quite centred. Um, as again, I was just fiddling with the gain settings and stuff. Um, this is actually doing it on a real star. I went and, and plugged it into the telescope. So, and that's a very bright star. So, we've got a fairly big uh, halo. So, you can see I'm just adjusting the focus a little. Um, but it, it just seems to be a more appropriate shape. So, I'm going to call that fixed. <laughs>